His analysis and reporting has helped us keep track of the candidates making their case in the Granite State throughout the primary process. Now on the day of the New Hampshire primary, Fox News political reporter Paul Steinhauser, he joins us live via Skype on what we can expect tonight. Paul, it's great to see you. How are you? Uh, great to see you guys. I just did my civic duty, and I'm an undeclared voter up here. But most people call it dependent, so I went across the street to the town hall. Uh, grab a, I'm allowed to vote on either side. I, I'll be honest. I'll tell you guys this. I did vote to uh, grab a Democratic ballot because be honest, that's where all the action is. But when right. I was done, I went back and re-registered as an undeclared voter. So I'm an independent voter in New Hampshire once again. <laughs> well, there we go. So, Paul, how was the process? How did it all go? Was it smooth, streamlined, easy, or was Com there a, comfort us, Paul. some chaos? It's gonna oh, be okay, going to be okay, right? <laughs> it's all good. We, you, we are in New Hampshire now. This yeah. is a primary, not a caucus. And it is also administered and overseen by the Secretary of State's office, by the government, not by the state parties up here. So every, stay calm. Everything is good. Hopefully this will go crystal clear. Awesome. <laughs> Love so that. Who's got the momentum on the ground? What are you saying? Well, Amy Klobuchar was just in Manchester at a polling station. She's saying she's got all the momentum, and she's been saying that nonstop for about two days. The last tracking polls here, we had two. One of them showed her jumping nine points since her debate performance on Friday night. Uh, to third place, edging out Biden and Warren. The other poll had her moving up, but not as much. She claims she has the momentum. We had those, you know, at midnight here in New Hampshire. You've got Dixville Notch, Hart's Location, and Millsboro, I believe, those three towns that voted midnight. She carried two of those towns. She was bragging about that this morning. She feels strong. So, Paul, tell us, what, who else has the big energy on the ground? We saw Pete Buttigieg have a massive rally. Bernie Sanders followed up by having a massive rally. Is it, do we expect it to be kind of a toss-up between those two in the vote tonight? Yeah, I think it's already baked in that Bernie Sanders is probably going to win here, right? This is right next to Vermont. He won here huge, as he would say, four years ago when he crushed Hillary Clinton in the primary here. He's got probably the best ground game in the state. So, yes, we expect Sanders will win. If he doesn't, he doesn't meet expectations. That's the problem. And Buttigieg, everybody thinks, you know, will come in second. The battle now really is for third place between Biden, uh, Warren, and now Klobuchar, who's been moving up in recent days. Yeah, and how is Warren looking? Because she's also a neighboring state senator. You would think that would give her an edge, but she kind of took a hit coming out of Iowa. Right. Any signs of life there for her? She's had energetic crowds, maybe not as big as Sanders or as Buttigieg. And Sanders, by the way, had over 7,000 people last night at a rally at University of New Hampshire, the college town, obviously. Uh, I had uh, AOC there, uh, bands, it was a rally, it was a concert. So that was the largest by far of any Democrat here. The president, though, remember the president was in the here last night, and he had over 12,000 in Manchester. But yeah, Warren's getting a good crowd. Uh, there seems to be good energy. And she also has a very good staff here, really good grassroots operation that she built up over a year ago. She's hoping that operation will help her to a third-place finish here in New Hampshire. Well, that's interesting, Paul. So what do we expect? If Biden gets fifth tonight, Paul, what do you think that spells out for his campaign? You followed him. You've talked to him for quite a long time. You're going to keep following this campaign. I mean, that is really a catastrophic result for him. Yeah, uh, don't sugarcoat it. You're absolutely right. And even the, the former vice president has been downplaying expectations here. On Friday night, he said at the debate, I took a hit in Iowa. I'm probably going to take a hit here in New Hampshire. Uh, and then I asked him on Saturday when he had a news conference, are you writing off New Hampshire? He pushed back, but then he also said, I'm looking forward to getting to Nevada and South Carolina. And some of his supporters here are not so happy with him for basically almost writing off New Hampshire. A fifth place finish, as you asked, that would be devastating. It would yeah. really hurt with the campaign cash situation. Uh, and Bloomberg is just waiting there with all that cash. He's just yeah. waiting for the race to come to Super Bowl. That's yeah, right. that was an odd move in the debate. All right, so, Paul, as you're watching tonight, what locations are you going to be yeah. looking at? What should we be looking at to get a sense of which way this race is trending? Well, in a, on the Democratic side, you often look at the bigger cities, right? Manchester, Concord, uh, Nashua, Keene, uh, the Upper Valley area, <clears throat> up by Dartmouth, and especially where I live here on the seacoast, the Portsmouth uh, area. This, these are the big Democratic turnout areas. And, you know, to see which way the vote is breaking, you're going to look at those areas. Uh, mostly. And you're going to avoid a lot of the more traditional Republican areas where, well, you would expect they'll be voting for Donald Trump. Right. All Makes right. sense. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, we really appreciate Paul. you joining us. Always Good luck grateful. tonight. Always grateful. See you guys. Coming up, one nonprofit is using the nation's focus on New Hampshire to draw attention to the state's food insecurity crisis. More on that when Rising continues.